Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is a special uh, Sunday for us, and the tone of that first hymn is rather somber. Uh, it's often sung in Lent, uh, but it's chosen for today because it reflects some of the themes uh, we have memorializing today, the apology that uh, the Arch or, sorry, Archbishop Michael Pierce, the former primate of Canada, who was uh, head of the Anglican Church of Canada, and 30 years ago uh, on this day made an apology to the Indigenous peoples for the residential school system. And so we decided this year we're going to commemorate and memorialize that. So uh, while there are certainly uh, glimpses of hope and light and love, as there always is uh, in our faith in, uh, in Jesus Christ, there is also a little bit more of a somber tone to our service today than we might normally, uh, just in order to really treat this, uh, this uh, theme uh, with, uh, with the utmost of, of, of integrity and intentionality. If you're worshiping with us online today, uh, we thank you for uh, partic participating in, uh, in your way, and uh, this will be the last online service that we're offering in this uh, format, as uh, we're grateful for uh, the pandemic uh, receding and less of a need uh, to offer online worship. And so I just want to welcome those folks online and here in person. I want to thank all the people who have been involved in our online services, especially Cam, who's behind the camera, and those of you who watch online don't get to see him. So come up, Cam. Is that camera on? Yes, it should be. Just come up and show yourself. <laughs> and also the people who have done readings in church or during the pandemic, emailed them in, people who have sung the songs. Without everybody, this online service could not have happened. And while we are glad that the pandemic is over and the need for it has diminished, we are thankful to God that we had the resources and the people to bring services to you during the difficult times. So thank you people who've watched and thank you people who've taken part. God bless you all. And of course, we begin this time of worship today by acknowledging that we are meeting on the land of the Haudenosaunee, the Atawadaran and Anishinaabe peoples. This land has been inhabited by indigenous people who have taken care of it and been its stewards for thousands of years. We give thanks for the countless ways they have assisted the settler peoples who came to inhabit the land we also recognize the contributions Métis, Inuit, and other indigenous peoples have made in shaping and strengthening this region, the provinces, and Canada as a whole. May the Creator hold us gently in this time as we continue to mourn the loss of indigenous children's lives. Miigwech, all my relations. We sing of your glory. as the great river, the river Euphrates, 
All the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you for all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate it on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God, God within us. Thank you, God. Thanks be to God. Why did he come? He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. God loves you each and every one. God loves you. The long time ago story of God's love for us in the gospel of Jesus, known as John. We love you, Lord Jesus. Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me. The long time ago story of God's love for us in the Gospel of John. We, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Shall we pray? Loving God, as we take time to remember today important steps on the journey towards healing and reconciliation for our nation, we ask that you would continue to stir within our hearts and minds the need to embrace truth, the need to express love, and the need to work for justice and the need to show mercy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I read the apology that Michael Pierce offered, just a few quick thoughts pertaining to our scriptures today. Joshua, which we read a little bit about today, was the successor to Moses, and his task was to lead the people into the Promised Land after their exile from Egypt. In the wilderness, the people of God learned to trust in the one who saved them, and Joshua reminded the Israelites the Lord would be with them wherever they go. In the Gospel, we are reminded that we are not alone in our struggles in life. Jesus fulfilled his promise and sent the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who brings us to light, life, and deeper faith. And so we bear these themes in mind. The promise that God would be with us, that promise fulfilled in the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead us in truth, to comfort us as we explore and understand hard truths about ourselves and about our country, as we memorialize the primate's apology for the residential school system. Brief note of history. On August 6th, 1993, Archbishop and Primate Michael Pierce delivered an apology 
to the sacred circle, then called the National Native Convocation in Menaki, Ontario, for the Anglican Church of Canada's role in residential schools. The apology came after three days of emotional testimonies from residential school survivors, while a lengthy downpour of rain took place outside at the gathering. Some described the three days as a time enveloped in darkness, as stories of cultural loss, abuse, and the stripping away of language, spirituality, and heritage dominated the gathering. Yet after the primate's apology, clouds parted and sunlight returned. The next day, Indigenous Elder Vi Smith responded on behalf of the survivors and elders at the National Native Convocation in acknowledgement and acceptance of the Primate's words. It's first the apology and then the response to it. From Michael Pierce, brothers and sisters, together here with you, I have listened as you have told your stories of the residential schools I have heard the voices that have spoken of pain and hurt experienced in the schools and of the scars which endure to this day. I have felt shame and humiliation as I have heard of suffering inflicted by my people and as I think of the part our church played in that suffering. I am deeply conscious of the sacredness of the stories that you have told and I hold in the highest honor those who have told them. I have heard with admiration the stories of people and communities who have worked at healing, and I am aware of how much healing is needed. I also know that I am, in need, I am in need of healing, and my own people are in need of healing, and our church is in need of healing. Without that healing, we will continue the same attitudes that have done such damage in the past. I also know that healing takes a long time both for people and for communities. I also know that it is God who heals, and that God can begin to heal when we open ourselves, our wounds, our failures, and our shame to God. I want to take one step along that path, here and now. I accept and I confess before God and you our failures in the residential schools. We failed you. We failed ourselves. We failed God. I am sorry, more than I can say, that we were part of a system which took you and your children from home and family. I am sorry, more than I can say, that we tried to remake you in our image, taking from you your language and the signs of your identity. I am sorry, more than I can say, that in our schools so many were abused physically sexually, culturally, and emotionally. On behalf of the Anglican Church of Canada, I present our apology. I do this at the desire of those in the church, like the National Executive Council, who know some of your stories and have asked me to apologize. I do this in the name of many who do not know these stories. And I do this even though there are those in the church who cannot accept the fact that these things were done in our name. As soon as I am home, I shall tell all the bishops what I have said and ask them to cooperate with me and with the National Executive Council in helping this healing at the local level. Some bishops have already begun this work. I know how often you have heard words which have been empty because they have not been accompanied by actions. I pledge to you my best efforts and the efforts of our church at the national level to walk with you along the path of God's healing. The work of the residential schools working group, the video, the commitment and effort of the special assistance to the primate for this work, the grants available for healing conferences are some signs of that pledge, and we shall work for others. This is Friday, the day of Jesus' suffering and death. It is the anniversary of the first atomic bomb at Hiroshima, one of the most terrible injuries ever inflicted by one people on another. But even atomic bombs and Good Friday are not the last word. God raised Jesus from the dead as a sign that life and wholeness are the everlasting and unquenchable purpose of God. Thank you for listening to me, Archbishop and Primate Michael. 
In response to these words from the primate, are words from Vi Smith on behalf of the elders and participants in this conference. On behalf of this gathering, we acknowledge and accept the apology that the primate has offered on behalf of the Anglican <coughs> Church of Canada. It was offered from his heart with sincerity, sensitivity, compassion, and humility. We receive it in the same manner. We offer praise and thanks to our Creator for his courage. We know it wasn't easy. Let us keep him in our hearts and prayers that God will continue to give him the strength and courage to continue with his tasks. Today we know that the journey of reconciliation continues through listening, truth-telling, repentance, and healing with Indigenous peoples, both within and beyond the Church. When reflecting on the 15th anniversary of the Apology, Archbishop and Primate Fred Hiltz acknowledged the progress made since 1993. In 2019, Archbishop Hiltz furthered the commitment with an apology for spiritual harm during the gathering of the Church's national decision-making body, General Synod. General Synod 2019 also passed a motion to memorialize the apology, and August 6th was designated as the day in the Church's liturgical calendar for memorializing the apology in 1993. That's what we're doing here today. In 2022, Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby's Canadian visit to several Indigenous communities brought further reconciliation. Archbishop Justin offered an apology for the Church of England's legacy of colonialism and the harm done to Indigenous people. And here I'll close with just an, expert, or an excerpt uh, from Justin Welby. For that terrible crime, sin, evil of deliberately building hell and putting children into it, and staffing it. I am more sorry than I could ever, ever begin to express. I am ashamed. I am horrified. I ask myself, where does that come from, that evil? It has nothing, nothing to do with Christ. Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, May 1st, 2022. In a moment, we're going to go through a litany of reconciliation that was uh, developed by folks who are continuing to work through this process of, of healing and reconciliation. It's not pleasant, of course, for us to be rehashing and retelling uh, these stories and marking these steps along the journey, but I feel it's essential. I mean, the church feel it is essential as well. If we are to stand as lights, as symbols of God's love for the world, and we have to acknowledge our own weakness, our own failings, historically and at present. That's why every week we have a moment of confession as part of our worship together. It's not to beat ourselves up, but rather it's an opportunity to be vulnerable before God and before each other, to admit that we don't have all the answers and that sometimes our actions inflict pain upon others. The hope that we have, of course, is that our God is a God of forgiveness, of love, and is concerned with justice and the whole, whole well-being of God's people, of God's, all of God's creation. And so as we journey through the rest of this service together, I would encourage you to, uh, to reflect upon these words that we use, recognizing again that it's not about fostering guilt within us, but it's about facing up to truth so that we can move forward, that we can be receivers of grace and forgiveness, and then also more freely bestow that grace and mercy upon one another so that we can truly live uh, in a kind of harmony that God desires for us. Let us read responsibly a litany for the healing and restoration of our church. Holy Creator, in whom all things in heaven and earth have their being, have mercy on us. Risen Christ, through whom the whole creation is reconciled to God. Have mercy on us. Life-giving Spirit, whose love and truth fills us, fills the world and searches the depths of our lives. Have mercy on us. Blessed Trinity, source of both unity and diversity. Have mercy on us. From our failure to recognize and respect the revelation of your truth and love in the first peoples of this land, Savior, forgive and heal us. 
from our participation in the systemic oppression of, the, of indigenous sovereignty, language, culture, and spirituality. Savior, Savior forgive, forgive, and do us. us. From our role in the Indian residential schools, designed to eliminate the unique society, wisdom, and beauty of the indigenous peoples of this land. Savior, Savior forgive, forgive, and do us. us. From our complicit tolerance of the dissemination of indigenous family structures, leaving children vulnerable to abuses of every kind. Savior, forgive, and heal us. From our continued acceptance of unjust legal, educational, health, and social structures that continue to oppress and destroy the lives of many indigenous people. Savior, forgive, and heal us. O oh God, we pray for the gifts of your grace and your love, which never gives up on us and is forever faithful. Inspire our minds with a vision of the reconciliation of your kingdom in this time and place. Hear us, O Christ. Touch our eyes that we may see the sacredness in all creation. Hear us, O Christ. Touch our ears that we may hear from every mouth of every peoples the hunger for hope and stories of refreshment. Hear us, O Christ. Touch our lips that we may speak of the beauty of every tongue and dialect proclaiming the wonderful works of God. Hear us, O Christ. Through our hearts that we may discern your mission in which you call us to be immersed, particularly in partnership with the first peoples of this land. Hear us, O Christ. Christ. Touch our minds that we may witness to your good news in our neighborhoods, communities, and all parts of the world. Hear us, O Christ. Touch our hands that we may forever shun violence and embrace the work you give us to do. Hear us, O Christ. Draw your church together, O Lord, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving you in, mission, in your mission in the world, and together witnessing to your love on every continent and island of your creation. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ, in whom we are one. Amen. Amen.
Jesus. Jesus.